Well, we're back. We're back. Here we are. I'll We've been on a, how long has the hiatus been? About a year and a half. Wow. Okay. We got to, got to, I got to dust off some, you know, the rust and the, I got some issues over here. I'm like the Tin Man in the Wizard yeah. of Oz. I got to get some oil in my joints. I had a physical therapist tell me I was the Tin Man one time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now we both are. You've had a lot going on. Why don't you let yeah. me know what you've been up to? Well, it's been a big year. Well, personally, I've have a new child. So I already have a six year old. Now I have a eight month old, Matai. He's awesome. You know Matai well. Great guy. Love that guy. Yeah. His personality's coming out now. So he likes to cuddle and nuzzle and roar, much like myself. Now he might be a little more cuddly than you. I'm not sure. Well, I was going to say, I, I have roar more than I cuddle. And then, and yeah, I had you know I had spinal surgery, so that was a big deal. Yeah, that was big. Unex- unexpected spinal surgery. Removed the tumor that was benign. Spinal surgery is not fun, but you know we're talking about the dark side of wellness today, so there's kind of a context there. Of healing isn't always fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, we like to we like to think so, but yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, I'm so I'm so glad that went well. Yeah. So, and then, you know, we've been busy. I've been busy with you at the Institute and, you know, there's all these new states that, you know, keep coming and popping up. That's right. And, you know, the other thing that happened is really over the last year and a half, we wrote our book together. Yeah. And we're in the middle of talking to publishers about it. So it's pretty exciting. That's right. Right. So we're doing the psychedelic therapy book. Yeah. Well, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Gosh. Yeah. Like you just chipping away at different projects at the Institute, different programs, you know, optimizing the the psychedelic therapy training, launching other programs in the never-ending process of somatic therapy for who knows how much longer. I'm starting to question it now in their topic of toxic wellness. How far you mean your own somatic therapy? Yeah. Yeah, Why, why am I still doing that? Um, Well, you're what, like 700 hours in? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe more. Well, I guess if you include sitting on the cushion, you're like, oh man. Yeah. 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 And you know, over a hundred episodes in on, on the other podcast I do with my wife, Krista, which is really fun. The art of we, so that's, that's been a lot of fun to do. Yeah. So we're back. We're back. We're back on the dark side too. We're coming back with the dark side of the moon. Yeah. So we're, dark we're, dark side of wellness. Dark side of wellness. Yeah. There's some inspiration in this conversation though. It's not all it's not all about the dark. Yeah. It's not about the dark, but it, it's worth it's worth talking about because, you know, in the world of wellness and the whole, so to speak, wellness industry, there's so much focus on moving the needle in a positive direction, right? Trying to get more goodness and less badness. And, you know, in the in the world of spirituality, that can be quite a big misunderstanding or big big dead end, I would say. Yeah, it's 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 I think common. So I I you know I wellness culture I think now for sort of more of the general culture includes a lot of spiritual seekers inside the wellness culture. And I would say that, yeah, seeking a one-sided reality, like more happiness, less discomfort, more, you know, joy, less pain, more, less sorrow, you could say. Kind of this one-sided reality thing goes, it leads to the same problem you're already in, which is fighting for a one-sided reality. (laughs) You're already in that reality, probably. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting kind of, when I think about it, it's an inter- interesting polarity between wellness culture and spirituality culture. Because for me, when I think about wellness, I think about health and I think about, you know, trying to move away from disease into more thriving or more wellness. And there is absolutely an emphasis on, you know, getting into more sunshine and away from, you know, more of the shadow or the dark, you know, getting your numbers into physiologic range when those numbers are deranged in the beginning, right? So it's a really interesting kind of polarity or balance, I think, between what we might call, I might call a more spiritual perspective that, you know, there's yin and yang, there's 
light and shadow, there's up and down, it's all comes to a balance of zero in the universe. I mean, I really do believe that on a, on a spiritual level. And yet, you know, as a practitioner, I've spent decades supporting people to develop more order and less disorder in their lives and their bodies and their perspectives. So it's just, it's very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think where it becomes the dark side of wellness, like obviously you and I are trying to biohack and, you know, we can get to spirituality a little bit, but if we just talk about physically right now, you know, what's the latest research say about longevity and, you know, it's like working on strength and body mass and body fat levels and VO2 max and all this stuff, right? Variability. Met- yeah, metabolic conditioning. And so, sure. but, and all that means, I think the that's all great, but where's the dark side? I think the dark side is when it either becomes an obsession. I think obsessing about anything usually results in anxiety. And when it becomes anxiety, the thing you're trying to do, which is create more strength, resiliency, and stability and probably relaxation in your nervous system as a baseline you're now undoing that that's where it becomes that was the dark side of wellness is when you you start actually now you're elevating your cortisol and the whole pursuit and you're becoming perfectionistic and this is a major dark side of wellness culture is becoming perfectionistic right And we don't, you know, you can't tell who's going to live when and any of this, but as soon as we flip into perfectionism, we're not in reality. We'll never be perfect. We're going to age. We're going to die. Right. Right. We're, we're in the world of our mental apparatus or the world of ego, right? The world of self-preservation, narcissism, let's say obsession with the self, perfectionism, all of these things that bring a lot of misery, actually. Right. And of course, yeah. we, live, we live in a culture that reifies the ego, right? The, the pinnacle of psychotherapy prior to, I would say, prior to Carl Jung or prior to transpersonal perspectives, you know, psychoanalytic theory, at least in the Freudian sense, was all about getting the ego to its most healthy or most strong point that it could get to. And there was nothing beyond that in terms of development. Right. Right. Well, I think most traditions in psychotherapy are about self. I mean, cognitive, behavioral, existential, even humanistic, like it, it tends to be about self, inner inner peace, more than, you know, there are the different traditions that maybe gets into a more social relational function and things, but it, it tends to be more about us. You go to therapy usually alone. I mean, maybe you go with your partner, but it's a it's a solo affair. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good thing. I mean, personal development, I'm all for it, obviously. You're all for it. But sure. I think we're talking about the dark side of that pursuit here. So if now if we're talking more about the mind pursuit, like mental wellness, I think it's it's similar when we're obsessing about ourselves. And, you know, I think it can come out in a lot of different ways. It's like, I don't want to feel a certain way. I don't want to have to have certain feelings. I don't want to be a certain way. And a lot of shoulds that we're sort of basically enacting in therapy. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, it's this whole conveyor belt, once again, of the ego, I would say, that that tells us that after we get to A, B, and C, you know, and that could be, you know, a measurement of physiology, like your heart rate variability, or you can put your leg behind your head in yoga or, you know, whatever the the thing is, I can lift a certain amount on my bench press or something, then I'll feel good. Then I'll be free. Then I'll feel X, Y, Z, right? I mean, I, I felt a little better when I got past 200 and bench press. And when I got my leg behind <laughs> my back when I was in my 20s, but it didn't solve much, but I felt a little better. <laughs> so I, I think we get a little reward out of those things, but you're right. It's sort of like, okay, now what? <laughs> yeah. Every time, every time right. we, we achieve some milestone across the finish line, you know, it feels a little bit empty. It's like, okay, what, what, yeah. what now? Yeah. Yeah. It's a delicate balance on, on 
a path of wellness. Of so obviously, there is, you know, self mastery is a, isn't a bad thing. It's a great thing to to be on a path of self mastery and that you know, including getting outside of oneself. And yeah, but but there's also this delicate balance. Yeah, I think I think some of it is just taking ourselves too seriously. Yeah, you know, which is easy to do right now because there's a lot of scary things happening in the world and you know things that a lot of people would say are existential threats you know to, yeah to to humanity to the planet and so on it is a scary time for me anyway but you know if we get if we get super clamped down on how scary things are it's a similar problem right it's it's a similar kind of demand on reality that it needs to be different why can't it be this yeah way? Yeah. It's like we could take, you know, we can take solidify beliefs into not only wellness, obviously, we take solidify beliefs into every area of our life. And right. solidify beliefs tend to not, it's where we're not adaptive, right? And so there's a lot of stress in solidified beliefs. Right. So we bring that to wellness, obviously, is is the point of this episode. We often bring these solidified beliefs of like, this is how I need to do it. And and, you know, there's a lot of false starts usually with solidified beliefs in wellness, whether it's in nutrition or exercise or some people, you know, go the other direction where it's like, I can't even start with a solidified belief because then they get stuck in shame, right? When we have solidified beliefs, well, we'll, we'll be very split inside ourselves. I have to, I don't look the way I want to look. I don't feel the way I want to feel. I'm not the right weight i'm not the right body size i'm not the whatever it is and then then what that does is it causes a split in ourselves where we go into shame we often can't do that much about it or we go into shame and we get aggressive about it and then we're doing right. self-aggression and that's the perfectionism thing it's still self-aggression right. though right or another version of it is you know someone who and maybe this is a more primitive version but you know it's someone who does everything so to speak right you know they eat right they exercise they they practice you know whatever some spirituality or they go to yoga or they do it to try to treat their partner right whatever and they get cancer right and then yeah. then then their friend says well you obviously haven't you know worked through enough of your issues and that's why you got cancer or you know it must be a manifestation yeah. of your yeah, or they, or they believe that too, right? They're just like, oh, I did something wrong. I mean, that's right. actually common. Like when I got my tumor, I was like, what did I do wrong? You know, I think it's always a surprise when the body doesn't go as we wanted it to go. It's a surprise. Of course. It's, it's a you know, shock. it's a shock, and we're like, wait, that's me. Like I didn't, I didn't put myself in that category, right? Uh, you know, and and this is where we identify with the body. And we create all these identities about how the body should be. And, and this is where it's all a practice, right? Like there's, it's all just a practice and a learning of, of being with. It's like engaging with the body and, and definitely leaning into like growth. But then it's like, how much control do we have? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, telling a story about what did I do wrong? You know, it could also just be another way to, try to make sense of you know what maybe maybe there's a feeling of control right that if if i knew what i did wrong then i could control what happens to my body i could prevent right. it from happening again yeah yeah and, and, and maybe you did do something wrong but maybe <laughs> maybe you actually did something that that actually had a you know it's not causal but it you know there was a relationship like yeah, you know, you're a heavy smoker and you get lung cancer. Like it's it's not about right, right or wrong, but I, I'm saying there there can be cause and effect here. But I think the the dark side of wellness is when we when we get into you know using again. I think it's pride and shame as really our motivation. Yeah, for the pursuit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a spiritual ego maybe. Yeah, I, right. I, used to, I used to spend a lot of time in in Hawaii, and not to pick on the you know settlers let's say the the north american slash you know european descent settlers in hawaii too much but one thing i noticed there was there was because everything is kind of it's kind of like paradise it becomes really problematic to display in in some of the communities that i was in a bad mood or a negative 
believe or a thought process, you know, and there's kind of like a lot of cognitive dissonance or, you know, kind of difficulty in allowing for imperfection inside of mm-hmm. such a beautiful, perfect place. It's like, well, what do you have to complain about? You know? Yeah. And so there is this kind of aggression inside of demanding that we live up to a spiritual version of of ourselves, of of reality. Or 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 a fantasy yeah. that when you're more developed spiritually, you have fewer negative thoughts. Well, that's a really important, I think, part of this conversation. When you're spirit the fantasy of when you're spiritually developed, you have more negative thoughts. Less negative thoughts. Less negative <laughs> thoughts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Less. So and I guess more happy thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that is a I don't think that's a probably it depends where you're sort of studying and things, right? Like there's plenty of spiritual communities and stuff that's not preaching that. But I think that on an individual level, most people would say, I'll take that, you know, like, yes, I I would rather not have my negative thought process as much. Like, I think even if a community is teaching that, the practicality of how how it actually works for an individual, even on any of these paths, is like, we probably inside ourselves are still fighting with our negative thoughts. Yeah. Right? I mean, I am. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, I mean, in a way to, to see how, and I, I'll just speak for myself, that, you know, what brought me to spirituality, and, and, and I would say I spent, you know, a couple decades of my life in deep, deep search for, for spiritual answers. A lot of it was drive, driven by suffering. You know, I was suffering. I wanted to suffer less. And I think people can relate to that. Sure. Uh, well, if you're and, not suffering, there's not there's nothing to search for. Exactly. Exactly. You're already there. But then you find out that, or at least what what I think I found out there was that the the authentic path of spirituality is not about you don't actually suffer less when you're more spiritually developed. Yeah. Um, you might become less attached to your suffering, but the acuity of the suffering doesn't diminish at all yeah you might become less identified with it yeah right yeah it still comes i will say that i i I will say that there's also more and more flow states which it's not that there's an absence of suffering in flow states but i will say with i think with spiritual development you you can attain more and more states of feeling fulfilled feelings of fulfillment and gratitude and Mm -hmm. there are certain things i think that do get cultivated even though suffering still comes and goes like it always does right 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 but then there's like qualities that show up more yeah in the path yeah you're 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 maybe less you take things less personally so you're less attached right so you like to make fun of me when we're driving in town because I sometimes you're, get... you're easy to make fun of over driving. <laughs> Anybody would make fun of you over driving. It's like being I, in a. It's like it's like comedians having coffee it's or like whatever a sitcom. that is. Yeah, totally. Comedians yeah. in cars getting coffee. Yeah, except the comedian would be in the passenger seat making fun of you. So I've come a long way. I mean, I used to be a, a pretty angry driver, and I didn't ever get into you, like, you, you got a little. You, you came a little. You came a little bit of a way. <laughs> Baby steps. Yeah, yeah, baby steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I was just gonna say, I, I do take things less personally in yeah. the car than I used to. Yeah, yeah. You only um, shout for about three seconds. <laughs> used to shout for like three miles down the road. That's a big difference. <laughs> and tell people when I get home about it. Yeah, that's actually a big difference. That's <laughs> actually is. this is that spiritual maturity. Yeah, yeah. Getting there. Yeah, I know. I, I think you're right. Like on the on the flip side of sort of this dark side is taking things less personally and it's you know it's it's so interesting it's like in the personal development space and and i think somewhat more than sort of spiritual community space but you know it's about developing self right it's about Mm -hmm. like developing certain characteristics of self and even even if it's relational self it's just like developing self in the world which again like 
I'm all for it. Like I'm definitely on that path. But then there's also like if the dark side doesn't take over, there's also an erosion of self in that process. It's it's sort of an interesting thing that happens where it's like self is developing and loosening at the same time. Yeah, there was a saying I heard a long time ago that you need to become someone bef- before you can become no one. Um, right. Something, something along those lines where I think about developing a healthy, flexible ego is is a really important stage in the journey. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely not the last stage in the journey and it keeps it keeps showing up, you know? Totally. It's under ideal circumstances. I think of it as like the R2D2 behind Luke Skywalker letting you know oh. something's going on. Yeah. Put and just kind of whispering bells in your ear. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you remember to send that email? Did you pay your taxes? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Reminded me when I was on the the beach once in Colombia and at ayahuasca ceremony, I was hearing R two D two in my head. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, he's telling me something. <laughs> I was like, R two D two is trying to tell me to wake up. So it's wow. like R two D two. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think that crosses into this concept of authenticity on the path, like, and the dark side of that. Like, so I'm just, you know, it's like you hear a lot of them trying to be authentic, you know, speak my truth, be in my truth, live my truth, trying to discover who I am. And again, like that all makes total sense from my perspective of like, I don't know what else you're going to be doing. The opposite doesn't sound very appealing to me. But then there is there is this shadow in there, right? Mm-hmm. Where what, what we're talking about, which is like when you start solidifying and taking yourself too seriously, what ends up happening is, is you're actually now in your quote-unquote authenticity, you feel you're superior. Right. You There's start seeing your own values as better than other people's values in your authenticity because you're just being yourself and speaking your truth and but often what it's what's happening there is it's like well i know something more than you yeah and i'm gonna let you know it i'm gonna teach you a lesson yeah put you in your place yeah 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 i'm reminded of one of my wife's heroes i guess heroin is maybe the better word over the years has been alanis marset and we had the opportunity to go to her tour in Denver a few weeks ago. And it's called yeah. the Wholeness, the Wholeness Tour. And one of the things she said that I thought was so cool that aligns with what you and I are talking about is that she said, look, we're not going after wellness. We're going after wholeness. Yeah. And it's it's such a cool shift in the conversation because I think wholeness implies embracing all of it. Right. Um, right. The good, the bad, right. the ugly, the the shame, the fear, the pride. Ill, the illness joy, and wellness. All of it. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So wellness is almost, it's almost like it comes with a charge attached to it because it it definitely has clear opposite that. Yeah. It's not more of a neutral term, so to speak, or it's not a very wide term. It actually is very a polarized term. Exactly. As soon as you start making a list in your head of this is what enlightenment looks like, or this is what a developed person thinks or feels or acts like, then immediately, yeah. you know, some part of your ego is wanting to, you know, act that out to front off some kind of image of, or go into shame because you're not actually feeling the feelings or doing the behaviors, you know, like an, an enlightened person always does their exercise routine or never eats dessert or, you know, whatever the thing is. Yeah. And it's like, totally. oh shit, I'm not that anymore. Totally. You're on this roller coaster of yeah. shame. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter, six year old daughter, definitely calls me out on that sometimes. You know, I'll be like telling her, like, hey, you know, you really, she'll like put on an outfit and I'll be like, I don't, that outfit's a little, you know, like, you know, and it's more of like a costume versus, you know, a societally acceptable thing. And she'll just be like, don't tell me. It's it's me. It's my choice. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, you know, you're probably right on this one. They're like, it's just like, okay. You know, and I, it's just like me putting my filter on her. Right. 
I mean, sometimes that's not the case, but right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and that's part of the discernment, right. As a, as a parent is like, okay, what actually, you know, making your kid put on a jacket in minus 20 degree weather is one thing, right. That's not just neurotic. Yeah. Acting yeah out. It's more of a boundary around right. physical health. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And then there's there's this other piece, I think, in this whole conversation around, you know, it's not just dark side of wellness culture, it's dark side of sort of spiritual culture. And I also think about this piece of the bypassing around how to actually create something in the world, like through manifestation. And you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna the law of attraction. Like I'm just gonna yeah. wish it to happen and there's a lot of I, again, like I think it's a little bit of a dark side in in this space of not wanting to effort, yeah, in order to influence the world. Yeah, it's a fantasy that hard work is not involved in right creating the world that you want to create. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, and, and there is something to be said about attraction on some level. Like I've always. If I go back through my life, there's some synergistic things that have happened right in the moments that I'm opening to those things, Yeah, as you know. So there's like that element, but like if you take out the work, then it's just like it, it all goes away in my experience. Like it, it's nothing right. more than a moment in time if you don't attach to it the work. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's the same in just any development path it's just that we have to engage in you know this sort of right effort concept which is like not too much not too little right exactly it's a it's a partnership and a dance with the universe to do your own part some people might in their personality veer toward i don't have any control you know i'm not i can't author my own experience whatsoever and more of a helpless version. And then you have people like me who kind of get surprised when I'm not in total control of my destiny and get all upset about it. And the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, right? That a friend of mine, or a friend of ours, uh, Tammy Simon and I were talking about how much control you have in, in the things that you try to create. And she said, oh, I think about 35%. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, I think it's at least 50%. But as I get older, yeah. I think, you know, I think Tammy's right. I think yeah. it's a lot less than 50%. You know, there's a lot more going on. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm on your and your. I, I thought it was ninety percent until I got the tumor. <laughs> right, right. That'll set you straight. I, that knocked me down another ten percent. So I'm still <laughs> I'm I'm still at eighty, but in it. another decade I'll probably be at fifty. Yeah, and then eventually I'll be at zero. Yeah, <laughs> percent when I die. That's <laughs> when it all gets taken away from you. Yeah, unless so it goes you, from, maybe. It, yeah. Goes from like a hundred percent at age two or three, and then goes all the way to yeah, zero. yeah, yeah. It's at some point it kicks into a hundred. <laughs> you know, probably as a, as a kid somewhere. Hopefully, maybe if, not. If some lucky. kids, some kids actually feel like it's zero percent, and yeah, and then it kind of whittles down over over the decades as you get hum <laughs> as you get humbled. So it's probably like thirty five percent. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well that, that might be a good place to stop, which is, you know, go exercise your 35% of control in a right effort way of doing growth and development and <laughs> healing and going toward wholeness yeah. and out of the fantasy of wellness. Yeah, and keep, you know, if you can, and it's okay if you can't, but see if you can keep your sense of humor about the the humbling events. Yeah. And, you know, it's okay if you can't. It's not a report. There's certain event. There's certain events that you just won't for a long time. Yeah, yeah it takes time. Yeah. That that's that's reality too. Yeah. Okay. Till next time. <laughs>